Hello everyone and I welcome you all to this tutorial on ECGs. In spite of the technological advancements in the field of medicine, doctors around the globe hugely rely on the ECGs which is a very primitive and a simple tool yet capable of interpreting cardiac rhythm, conduction abnormalities, electrolyte disturbances and diagnosing myocardial diseases like myocardial ischemia, pericarditis, cardiomyopathy, so on and so forth. Certain valvular heart diseases, certain hypertensive cardiac diseases can also be diagnosed with the help of the ECGs. So talking about the components of the ECG, the machine which records the graph on the grid paper is called electrocardiograph and the recording is called an electrocardiogram. It's abbreviated as ECG and in some countries it is abbreviated as EKG. They're both synonymous. The functional principle behind the recording of an ECG is the use of electrodes connected to a galvanometer which picks up the potential difference between the two electrodes and records it on the graph paper. Now let's talk about how a typical ECG paper looks like. As you can see, the vertical axis is reflective of the voltage and the time is plotted along the horizontal axis on the ECG. The ECG paper runs at a speed of about 25 millimeters a second for all clinical purposes. This means that the paper covers 25 millimeters in one second. The ECG paper is divided into small boxes of about one millimeter square, of which one millimeter is length and one millimeter is breadth. Now as per the formula, velocity is given by distance covered in unit time. Since the speed of the paper is about 25 millimeters a second, it takes 0.04 seconds to cover one millimeter of the small box. For simplicity, let's convert 0.04 seconds to 40 milliseconds and it shall be referred in milliseconds throughout this video. Now the ECG paper also constitutes larger boxes with darker lines which contains five small boxes. Collectively, each large box is 5 mm square in area. So, in order to cover one large box, it takes about 40 milliseconds times 5 times, which is equal to 200 milliseconds. Now, vertically, as per standard calibration, 10 small boxes, which is 10 mm, equals 1 millivolt. Now, let's get into the concept of electrical fields. Electrical field is basically a vector. Now all vectors have both magnitude and direction. The electrical activity recorded on the ECG closely depicts the net action potentials of all the cells of the myocardium. Please note that the action potential which is the electrical activity of the heart is not synonymous with the mechanical activity of the heart. The electrical activity is fast with a quick onset of depolarization followed by repolarization and the mechanical activity of systole and diastole follows respectively. When the wave of depolarization starts at the SA node, it travels through the atria, AV node, the bundle of His and eventually to the ventricular myocardium. Now this creates a minute electrical field that can be captured on the body's surface with the help of the electrodes. Note that the ECG does not record the activity at the specialized myocardium like the SA node, the AV node or the bundle of His. It only records the electrical activity of the myocardium. Well, there are certain principles as to how an ECG is recorded. Let's talk about some of the basic principles of ECG recording. The things that you must remember are that rapid depolarization results in sharp recordings and a relatively slower depolarization results in smooth and blunt recordings. When the net electrical activity is nullified, an isoelectric line is recorded. Also, when the discharge is occurring through the AV node, isoelectric line is again recorded. The fundamental principle underlying positive and negative deflections on the ECG is that the positive charges during depolarization moving towards a positive electrode results in a positive deflection, that is, upward deflection with respect to the isoelectric line. On the contrary, if 
Negative charges during repolarization are moving towards positive electrode, results in a negative deflection. Now let's discuss an experiment to understand the electrical fields. Now let us consider a piece of isolated myocardium stimulated by an external source. Initially, the inside of the cells is negative owing to the proteins, the sulfates, which all have a negative charge. When it is stimulated, the influx of sodium inside the cell renders positive. This creates a dipole with a positive charge at the point of stimulation and a negative charge in the rest of the myocardium. Because the myocardium is a functional sensation, the cells in the myocardium are interconnected. Hence, the flow of positive charges to the next connecting cell depolarizes it and the wave front is further transmitted. The direction of the dipole is the net direction of the positive charge relative to the negative charge, which incidentally, in this case, is also the direction of the wave of depolarization. The magnitude of the dipole depends upon the net positivity of the cell. The greater the influx of sodium, the greater the magnitude of the dipole. Now extrapolating the results of this experiment to a more three-dimensional heart that we all have, there are multiple dipoles produced at any given point in time, but what is reflective and is captured on the ECG is the net magnitude and direction of the dipole. This net direction is termed as the electrical axis of the heart. Now there are certain factors that affect the magnitude of the electrical field, and they are the distance between the electrodes and the dipole, the size of the dipole, which in turn again depends upon the mass of the tissue being depolarized, and the orientation of the electrodes with respect to the dipole. Now let us go ahead and talk about the ECG leads. Fundamentally, there are two types of leads. There are six limb leads and six chest leads. A lead constitutes a positive and a negative electrode. Limb leads are three bipolar limb leads, namely lead one, lead two, and lead three, and three augmented limb leads, namely AVR, AVL, and AVF. The chest leads are designated as V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. In special circumstances, V7, V8, and V9 are also used. Now let's talk a little bit in detail about the limb leads. Let's talk about lead one. Lead one records the potential difference between the right arm and the left arm. The right arm acts as a negative electrode and the left arm has the positive electrode. Impulses traveling from the right arm towards the left arm show positive deflection. Likewise, lead two records the potential difference between right arm and the left leg. The right arm has the negative electrode and left leg acts as the positive electrode. Now lead three records the potential difference between left arm and left leg, wherein the left arm has the negative electrode and the left leg has the positive electrode. Now the right leg acts as a ground source, wherein the right leg is earthened. To create augmented leads, the three limb electrodes are connected resulting in a net zero potential and this is called as a reference electrode. For each augmented lead, the potential difference between the respective lead and the average of the other two leads is measured. For instance, ABR measures the potential difference between the right arm and the average of the potential difference between the left arm and left foot. The limb leads measure the electrical activity in the frontal plane, which is superior to inferior from right to left. Let's talk about the chest leads. The chest leads use the same reference electrode as the augmented limb leads, but the exploring leads are V1, V2, and so on until V6. The exploring electrodes are placed on the chest wall as V1 is placed in the fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternum. V2 is placed in the fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum. The next lead to be placed is V4, which is placed in the fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. 
After we successfully place V1, V2 and V4, V3 is placed midway between V2 and V4. V5 is placed along the anterior axillary line at the level of V4 or halfway or midway between V4 and V6 if the anterior axillary line is unclear or inconspicuous. Now V6 is placed in the mid axillary line at the level of V4. Chest leads measure the electrical activity in the horizontal plane which is anterior to posterior from right to left.